Today I'm going to show you how to literally calm the waves of the ocean. In November 1883, a large ship named the Grecian set sail from Philadelphia to Brazil. It was severely overloaded, so when it hit a storm several hundred miles offshore, it started taking on water due to the large breaking waves. Through sheer luck, they saw another ship traveling from New York to London, the Martha Cobb. They raised the flag N over V, which meant I'm sinking, to which the Martha Cobb replied with the code H over J, which means lifeboat cannot come. The Martha Cobb only had a 16-foot lifeboat, and the storm was still too strong, and the large and breaking waves would easily sink the small boat that they'd have to use to tender the men from the Grecian. However, the captain of the Martha Cobb, Thomas Greenbank, had an idea that would ultimately save the life of everyone on board the Grecian. He grabbed a five-gallon drum of fish oil that happened to be on board, and he dumped it over the side of the ship into the waters. After about 20 minutes, witnesses describe a magical event. The breaking waves were calmed around both vessels, and the lifeboat was able to rescue all 10 men from the sinking Grecian. But could this really be true? Does oil actually calm rough waters? And if so, how? Okay, it's a cold, windy day here at the reservoir. I'm gonna see if this Alaskan salmon oil can actually calm the wind waves on the lake. This is fish oil that you can buy at the pet store to feed your dog. It's also the same thing that you can take as a healthy omega-3 supplement. So this type of oil doesn't harm the environment. I'm gonna start at where the wind's blowing and see if it calms the waves away from me. This is a good view now. I was over there where that guy is. That's where I put the oil in. And look at it. One spoonful of oil. That is crazy. It's calmed the whole lake right there. It's like glass where the oil was. Looks like it's ice. After a few minutes, the wind had blown the oil slick towards the center of the lake. Okay, you can see there's the oil spot now moving across the lake. So there's waves before, not where the oil is, and after. Okay, I'm just going to put some on the snow here. I'm going to throw it out there. Look at that. It's moving down. It's a little bit easier to see the effect when I put it in fast motion. So watch me start putting it in and don't mind me slipping a few times as I try to film it. But you can see the smoothness spread out in a semicircle from where I put it in. Look at the circle spreading out. That is so crazy. But how could this small amount of material on top of the water make such a difference? And how would it be enough to calm giant waves in the ocean? Well, first let's talk about how waves form on the ocean. Initially, the wind blows across the surface of the water and there are small vortices that form at the surface due to turbulence causing indentations in the water that are very small at first. These are called capillary waves. They start off less than two centimeters in height, but now because these waves are sticking up more than the rest of the water, the wind pushes on those crests even more, which causes the waves to grow even more. Eventually, those waves can grow larger than 100 feet tall. And once those wind waves move out of the area where the wind's blowing, we call them swell waves. Swell waves have a regular pattern, but both of these types of waves started as wind waves. So if you want to stop the giant ocean waves, you have to start with the small capillary waves first. So how does a few nanometers of oil on the top of water stop capillary waves? Well, before we explain the mechanism, let me tell you about the sponsor for this video, Ground News. Ground News is a website and app developed by a former NASA engineer on a mission to give readers an easy, data-driven, objective way to read the news. I've been using Ground News to make sure I'm well-informed and avoid biased reporting. Ground News has access to over 50,000 news sources that allow you to compare headlines. And every story comes with a quick visual breakdown of the political bias, factuality, and ownership of the sources reporting, 
all backed by ratings from three independent news monitoring organizations. One of my favorite features of Ground News is the blind spot feed, which highlights stories that are disproportionately covered by one side of the political spectrum. This is really important because it reveals the division in our media landscape so we can better understand where people are coming from and why they hold the beliefs they do. So I encourage all of you to check out the link in my description, ground.news slash action lab, to better understand what's happening in the world around you. You can subscribe through my link to get 30% off unlimited access to the platform with the Vantage subscription, which is about $6 a month. And thanks to Ground News for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the experiment. The type of oil that I used was fish oil. Fish oil has a bunch of omega-3 fatty acids in it. If you look at these molecules, you'll notice that they have a polar and a non-polar end, meaning that there's an end that's attracted to the water and the other one isn't. So when you put fish oil in water, it spreads out in a very thin layer on top of the water. The side that's attracted to the water is in the water and the little tails stick up away from the water. They eventually form a monolayer on top of the water. But when a small wave forms, it causes the concentration of the oil on the water to be more concentrated near the peaks of the wave. This means that the surface tension near the tip is lower than at the base and this surface tension gradient causes a stress that makes the wave flatten out. This stress is called the Marangoni stress. This is the effect that happens whenever you have areas of different surface tension in a liquid. This causes a flow to occur from low to high surface tension. The Marangoni flow can easily be seen when you have two liquids with different surface tensions touching each other, like water and alcohol. What's interesting about this fact is it's not the surface tension changing that causes the waves to be damped, but it's the gradient of surface tension that happens when waves try to form. In fact, scientists have found that when there's too much oil in the water or too much surfactant, then the effect doesn't happen at all. It doesn't damp the waves. This ability for the oil to smooth the ocean surface is so well known that there's an expression that you might have heard before. To pour oil on troubled water means to soothe or calm down someone or a situation. This literally stems from the fact that sailors used to use oil to calm troubled waters. But the type of oil wasn't always well known. For example, during World War II, mineral oil was typically used to calm waters. But it doesn't have the same effect because the molecules tend to group together. But fish oil and different types of vegetable oil are repelled from each other, so they rapidly spread out across the surface, reaching basically a monolayer on top. From my own experiments, it's clear that the small capillary waves are damped from the oil slick on top. But can that really stop giant waves from forming on the ocean? Well, there have been many published studies that show natural oil slicks damping waves and other studies where they put fish oil on the ocean and see it damping the waves along with many other anecdotal stories like I mentioned at the beginning of this video. But how? You can see that if I put fish oil on these waves that are more significant than capillary waves, nothing happens. So how could oil be expected to stop a 10 meter wave from crashing? Well, the answer lies in the details of how wind waves form. As waves grow, they create turbulence in the surrounding air. This turbulence is a result of the friction between the air and the water surface. So turbulence in turn affects the surface roughness of the waves. As turbulence intensifies, it contributes to the breaking of the waves and the generation of white caps. White caps and breaking waves further increase the surface roughness. So the interaction between turbulence and surface roughness is a feedback loop. Rougher surfaces lead to more turbulence and increased turbulence influences the surface roughness. Larger surface roughness enhances the capture of wind energy, leading to increased wave heights. So, if you can reduce the overall roughness of the wave, you can change the wind profile of that section of the ocean. If the roughness of the water is reduced, then the overall turbulence of the wind is reduced. This total effect is to reduce the overall growth of waves. So the bigger patch of oil slick you have, the greater you'll affect the wind in a local area, reducing the waves in that area. In the story at the beginning about the Martha Cobb, scientists have analyzed this and showed that the oil would have spread out over a three to six kilometer region. This changed the equilibrium of wind and wavelength in that region, and the waves quickly died out as a result. This effect is one of my favorite examples of how some of the largest effects in life are built from small effects. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you learned something. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, remember to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.